I recently celebrated my 30th birthday. This is my current state of affairs. I'm living in my parents' house. I don't have a steady income. I'm not in a romantic relationship. I have very few friends. And I formally don't have academic education. In terms of what society expects as the norm, I practically lack in every single aspect. But if there's one thing I do possess, which, interestingly enough, many people who do have those things seem to be seeking, is happiness. I'm a happy person, but how does that all match? Well, one possible explanation is that I'm a complete lunatic, which might very well be true, but I would argue for a different explanation, and that is that I learned happiness. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I learned it the hard way. I will explain what I mean by that a bit later in the video, but in my understanding of happiness, I see that there are a couple of fundamental truths that no one seems to be talking about. And in this video I want to do just that, and I hope it gives anyone watching some value, or inspires to think about happiness from a bit of a different angle. The first thing no one talks about is the difference between feeling happy and being happy. To explain what I mean, I'll use this graph. Let's imagine that the upper part of the graph is the realm of positive, the lower part is the realm of negative. When the line goes all the way up here, it represents those moments of extreme joy, that feeling you get when you go out clubbing, drink, smoke, what people think making a lot of money feels, or what buying an expensive car or an expensive piece of jewelry feels. And correspondingly, when the line goes down here, it represents the difficult and severe occasions in life. Most believe, and justly so, that happiness lies here, and therefore should strive to be here as often as possible. Yet anyone with sensible memory can recall that the excitement such moments evoke doesn't last forever. The outing at one point ends, the effect of alcohol or weed ends, that money we were so eager to earn, or that thing we bought, sooner or later becomes something we are used to. This temporary excitement that lies here is what I call feeling happy. Because when we are there, there is no doubt that we are indeed feeling happy. But by definition, being here is a short-lived experience. And the question is, when those moments end, where does our line go from there? In the pursuit of this momentary happiness, most still claim they aren't happy, which means their line goes down. And what do we do then? We continuously bring ourselves back up, over and over again, go out again, drink again, smoke again, pursue more money, buy more things, because the more we do it, the happier we think we are. And we drop and rise, drop and rise, never finding that proper foundation we so desperately seek. Being happy, on the other hand, for me, is something completely different. Being happy is the unceasing command of this axis. Being happy doesn't necessarily mean you feel happy. What it means is that at the times you don't, you're always able to distinguish the positive and have full confidence that in the end, everything will be alright. Being happy means that you know life can sometimes be harsh, but at the same time you're holding an everlasting positive outlook on it. And the visualization is this. Mastering this axis means that when our line goes down, this happens. So that just like anyone, we are sometimes down, but we are there in a completely different footing. True happiness is not achieved by the pursuit of those moments but it's the understanding that you don't have to feel happy in order to be happy. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you shouldn't aspire for those moments. On the contrary, these are immensely meaningful experiences for us as human beings, and we should aspire to get as much of those as possible. I do too. What I am saying is this. In the pursuit of happiness, the answers are mostly never here, but here. So, how do we gain control of that access? In my past, I served as a commanding officer in a combat unit in the military. At the age of 22, I was positioned as a company commander, commanding around 100 men. I trained for this moment for four and a half inexpressibly difficult years, but I wasn't even half ready to what I was about to experience. Without going into too much detail, I very quickly found myself in one of the most difficult periods of my life, dealing with some of the most extreme dilemmas and situations, without barely drinking or eating or sleeping. I was so absolutely miserable and crushed that after all the hard work I'd put into getting to where I was, I literally considered quitting. And I remember a phone call I had with my mom where I told her that. And my mom, who's always been able to see right through me, said, Omri, lift your head up, 
put a smile on your face, think positively, and keep going. And I told her I couldn't. So she said, then fake it until you make it. I will not go into the concept of fake it until you make it in this video, but what I will say is this. My mom was right. When I decided to change my perspective of the situation, it simply changed. Not the situation. The situation itself remained exactly the same. But the way I took it, they did. This leads me to the second thing that one's talking about when it comes to happiness. Happiness is a matter of choice. Now listen to this carefully because this one is important. Happiness is not a result of anything else, but the person choosing to be that. It's not a result of earning more money, of buying a brand new car, or going out clubbing, but a result of choosing. And choosing is an active, conscious process. Sitting around at home, upset about not being happy, is a passive acceptance of a situation. Choosing to be happy, regardless of the circumstances that make one unhappy, is the true essence of happiness. I started this video out by saying that I learned happiness the hard way. The formative moment for me, where my perception of happiness got fairly fixed in my head, was also during my military service. Again, without going into too much detail, it was after a very perilous situation. And when I came out of that situation, intact and in one piece, something in me just changed. I no longer cared about money or career or how I looked or whatever the fuck people were thinking about me. The only thing I cared about was the simplest, most elementary and obvious of things. I was happy for being living. That moment changed me, and it's etched securely in my soul. It taught me that happiness is simple. It doesn't derive from looking up for more, better, greater things. No, happiness, first and foremost, comes from within. Appreciating the small and simple things in life that are nature, art, friendships, family, and chief among them, really, as silly as it sounds, is appreciating the fact that I opened my eyes in the morning. The simple happiness of being living. Try not to risk your life like me to understand that. So about these aspects, a certain sequence of events brought me to currently be in this situation in my life. And I'm working very hard, at least on some of them, to reform and recover. And I will, I know that. But I also know that my happiness, however related to them, is not dependent on them. These aspects suffice a different need of my human experience. It's partly happiness, but it's mostly the need for a meaning. But that's a story for a different video. I hope this was valuable to you, and if so, then that's the best 30th birthday gift I could have ever asked for. Because the fourth and last thing no one talks about when it comes to happiness is exactly this. Thank <laughs> you.